Tim, Russell, we all have a sense that sharing the gospel, sharing the good news about Jesus Christ is different in this culture. And I'm thinking specifically about Western culture in particular. Um, in one sense, what sense, Russell, do you think that it is different? And how can we begin to understand that and try to bring this good news to bear on our particular time and place? Well, I always think about the illustration Jamie Smith uses in his book on Charles Taylor, Secular Age, uh, where he talks about a mission trip of evangelicals from the Bible Belt going to Portland or Seattle and asking people about what they think about life after death. If you, what would you say to, uh, to God if he asks you why you should be let into heaven? And realizing it's not just that they're dealing with different answers, but different questions. So no one uh, in Portland is consciously thinking about the question, you know, how do, how do I get into heaven? And so you have to come at it a different way. And that's increasingly, uh, increasingly the case across the country. And so I think that's, that's one key difference is you can't assume that there's a certain level of conscious anxiety about afterlife uh, sorts of questions. Well, and certainly there are regional differences mm-hmm. there as mm-hmm. well. What you, I mean, that might be a real question that people are asking in parts of the Bible sure. Belt, yeah. even still today, yeah. depending on what religious background they come from. But, Tim, you specifically have really have years and years and years of experience of dealing with these questions, specifically with skeptics in New York City. What are... Give me maybe a, a key difference that you've seen even in New York City from when you started at Redeemer to now moving on after Redeemer. Well, the differences aren't... Um, hmm. There's some minor differences. Actually, I've been there almost 30 years. I've been there 28 years. And um, the, the, what's really happened in the country is what I, what I found in New York City almost 30 years ago is now in the rest of the country. Mm-hmm. So I, yep. it actually hasn't changed that much, not in a kind of macro way. Well, is, does that give us hope then? I mean, it's spreading, but New York is not moving further away? Is there some hope in that, or how do you, would you explain that? Well, the, th- the three things that have always been the case that make it pretty hard, and actually harder than um, reaching, a, you might say, a, a, as a post-Christian culture, a post-Christian non-Christian culture is harder to reach, I think, than a non-Christian culture for three reasons. One is, and uh, Russell's already alluded to this, one is there's no anxiety about sin in particular. In fact, it's hard to get people, get, uh, they, they have no concept of sin. So to even get across the concept of sin is something that is really difficult. You go to China, Africa, any, almost any other place, there's some concept, but not here. Mm-hmm. Uh, secondly, uh, the, our culture was actually built to counter Christianity. In other words, it's basically an escape from Christianity. Mm-hmm. And therefore, it foregrounds the failures of the church in a way that um, other cultures have not done. If you go to China right now, there's a, it's just very different to do evangelism there. <laughs> uh, there's an openness because they don't, they don't, they're not aware, frankly, of, of the church's failings. So here, they're foregrounded, almost like that's the only thing that matters. It's even aspirational. Yeah. You'll see some people in a Chinese context in particular that admire the United States, yes. that mm-hmm. see Christianity as part of the progress. And they, yes, in other words, here, nothing the church has accomplished uh, is attributed to the church. Basically, it's, it's always received by the culture without attribution. Yeah. But everything that's done wrong is, is foregrounded. But the third thing is, and this is where I get this from Charles Taylor, we're the first culture that doesn't believe it's a culture. It just mm-hmm. believes it's the universal way that all smart people see things. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the, uh, our culture is filled with beliefs, faith beliefs. And it's the one culture that doesn't believe it's got beliefs. It just, I'm just using my rationality to see things the way things are. And every other place, if you talk to a Buddhist, you talk to a Muslim, you go to a Hindu, they know they've got faith, and they know that their faith's different than your faith, so you have a clash. But here they just don't think they've got beliefs. Mm-hmm. They don't believe their view of life is a set of beliefs. And when you try to show it to them, they go very, get very upset. And so for all those reasons, it's a uniquely difficult place to do evangelism. Is this where you talk about David Foster Wallace and some of his, his illustration about the, the fish talking and, mm-hmm. like, what's water? Is yes. that where you're coming from? Sure. Like, we, we well, understand we are immersed in something, mm-hmm. but we just assume this is the way it is. Mm-hmm. But we don't even think about having to actively transmit it to subsequent generations because it's as if the culture already catechizes Mm -hmm. us through all these various forms of media and advertisement and things like that. Russell, do you 
do you think there's an, an opportunity here? So we're not, the church does not get credit for things. Mm-hmm. Things get pulled out of Christianity and applied without any context, and, we, and the church doesn't get credit for that. But are there ways that we can perhaps build on some of the things that the church has brought to Western yeah. culture? Well, I think, I think Tim is exactly right about the spotlighting the, the failures of the church. It doesn't bother me that the church doesn't get credit. Uh, And sometimes I'll talk to people who will say, what we need to do is to make the case of all of the value uh, that we bring to American culture and American life. I just don't think that that's a compelling reason for someone to take up his cross and follow Christ. So it doesn't bother me that they don't don't see that right away. It does bother me that they're often seeing a twisted vision of Christianity, Mm -hmm. uh, either in terms of some abusive church or some uh, scandal that they've seen. Uh, that does that is a that's a diffi- that's a, an entirely different thing, um, and so I think the real issue is to go in and try to find where they actually do have a point of overlap with Christianity that they that they don't even consciously know. So talking about sin, um, Tim was talking about uh, don't have a concept of sin. That's that's true at the cognitive level, but they do have mm-hmm. some sense of. Uh, shame and some sense Guilt. of transgression and, sure. and, and certainly in terms of what people have done to them. Right. Um, exactly. They Victim, understand. Victimhood. Yeah, that this is, this is wrong. Mm-hmm. And so finding those things um, is important. Well, I wonder what are some opportunities that we think about amid this emerging secularism. I wrote something recently for Table Talk about this. And, and really, Tim, I was using a lot of what you've described about the way the mushy middle is being abandoned actually brings some measure of clarity to how we present the gospel and, and what we're dealing with. Can you explain a little bit more of, of how some of these changes that we see in Western culture might actually be positive opportunities for gospel proclamation, for evangelism? Well, I think you already, yes, and that you mentioned the one. I, I actually, I, I was a, a pastor my first 10 years in a small town in Virginia in the 70s and 80s. And there it actually was, uh, part of the problem was, giving people, getting people to admit that maybe I'm not a Christian. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, was, <clears throat> that was insulting, even though you could see they weren't mm-hmm. uh, uh, at all, but they were very insulted. And I said, oh, I was born and raised in this country. You know, okay, mm-hmm. uh, that's not a problem anymore. And actually, I, I'm glad. I'm glad that that's generally not so much a problem. It's uh, people know, in a sense, that they're not Christians, and, and that's a big help. I think another thing probably would be the... Um, uh, that years ago, uh, the, the number one thing that people told me was a problem was uh, there can't be miracles. Miracles don't exist. So nothing in the Bible could have happened. Resurrection couldn't happen. Strangely enough, the postmodern world means people are not as sure mm-hmm. about reality. <laughs> and they, they're, they're even being, they're more open to the idea, well, maybe there is a transcendent dimension or a spiritual dimension. So there are some minor ways, in spite of the difficulties, that I, I find it a a little e- easier to get a hearing than I did in Virginia uh, 40 years ago when everybody thought they were Christians and they were much more uh, rationalistic in saying, well, miracles could never happen. And today, those, some of those barriers are gone. But uh, overall, I still think it's harder being a, a guy who's been working at this for 40 years. Overall, it's harder. 